<laughs> Roll the tape. All right. Thank you guys for coming out. I'll make this brief because it's really not about me. It's about you guys and sharing what you know with them. And then we can use this to send it to everybody else in your sphere. So I wrote this down on my phone. This is, uh, this is the third annual top agent panel. Well, third, the third <laughs> top agent panel. <laughs> the third annual. Um, uh, my name is Chris Baird. I'm a team leader at Keller Williams in Reading. I was an agent for Keller Williams in Los Angeles. Um, I grew up around here. People always ask me why you came back. Because I lo look at everybody. Yeah, why? <laughs> the weather. Because I love New England and I like the seasons. Um, and I wanted to come back home actually to help grow what we're doing here. So uh, a lot of you people are here know what we're doing and it's it's been successful. So the idea behind this event is to showcase productive agents. And that's what definitely you guys are uh, from various brokerages. So. I want you to share your successes, your failures, and your motivations. I think we all get a kick out of the failures. <laughs> <laughs> Don't we all? Let, let's, let's us know that we're all in this together. So I want to get through. The agents here tonight are to do that, educate and share experiences to help positively shape the industry. So luckily, we have an MC who gets to run the show, <laughs> not me. <laughs> Tim Shea is a, an agent for the Beverly office, Keller Williams, he knows how to engage people which really isn't that important, I don't think, because none of us have ADHD, do we? <laughs> I don't think any agents have ADHD. No. But first, I want to uh, give a little prop to Mike Conway, who's helping to host part of this tonight. So you want to come up and say what you do, or you can say from back there. And halfway through, we, a boxing <laughs> ring comes out, and then we put the gloves on. So, uh, <laughs> so without any further ado, Tim Shea, let's get it going, man. I'm gonna try and go over here and see if this picks it up. But uh, how's everybody doing? This is gonna be an interesting format. We're actually gonna be recording this tonight, so you're gonna live on in, po on in perpetuity. So this is great. Um, uh, so let's, without any further ado, let's just kind of get into it and, uh, and uh, just ask some questions. I'd love to know from all of you on the panel. So just give you a little heads up how it's going to go. You guys got some questions. Um, and we're going to kind of just go around, and, and I may pick on you for a question. I may not pick on you for a question. But the one question I do want to have all of you answer is how you got involved in real estate. And we'll just start down here with you, Juliet. Um, I got involved with real estate uh, when in my former life. I was catering director at MIT, and um, I had children so I can get out of that job because it was horrible. And then I just sort of fell into it when I was selling and buying my house. I told my agents that if I needed to um, cover some open houses for them, then I'd love to. And then that's just, I sort of fell into it. It Great. was temporary. Right. 15 and so, years later. And so, uh, I, I, if I didn't hear it, I don't know if he did Chris introduce everybody? No. Mm. All right, so no. let's go ahead and just kind of start with that, too. So, we've got Juliet Leiden, Leiden, Leiden. Leiden uh, from Remax. So, thank you so much for giving uh, that, that explanation. We've got Chris <laughs> Cassidy with Keller Williams Redding, right? So, Chris, how did you get involved in real estate? <clears throat> So my male modeling career was winding down. <laughs> um, it's still going. Don't don't pay any attention to him. Um, so I, I got in the business 23 years ago. I, I used to have a friend, more of an acquaintance in my circle of friends, who would compete with me on everything. And uh, I was doing automotive work. I was a shop manager, actually. Nothing like real estate at all. And... Um, he got into real estate, and uh, he was actually doing pretty good. He was working at Remax, and uh, I thought, if he can do it, I can do it. But I was, and I, I'm not trying to be mean, but it was really like that. And um, so I got into the business. I had been looking to get out of automotive, and I was looking to find something. And uh, a lot of friends had said, you should go into sales and, you know, whatever. Because everyone thinks if you have an outgoing personality, that's all you need. Yeah. But obviously, you need more than that. But um, talent and charisma. So, um, so I, um, yeah, so I got my license and I just jumped into it and 
23 years later, I'm still here, so. 23, great, yeah. So Juliet, how many years have you been 15. involved? 15. 15 years, okay, great, great, thank you guys. So we've got a well-seasoned crew here. So Susan Gormady, so you're with Classified Realty. Yep. How long have you been selling real estate for? This will be my fifth year. Fifth year, yeah. okay. And what brought you into real estate? So several years ago, um, my husband and I decided that we were gonna sell our house on our own. We didn't need a realtor. And uh, <laughs> she loves those, those people. <laughs> and um, and we, we did it. We staged the house. We took the photos. We hosted the, the open house. Um, we marketed it. And it sold. It sold yeah. the first weekend. Um, and I just, at that point, I, I instantly fell in love with it. I said, you know what, this is, this is for me. This is what I want to do. And uh, yeah, and five years later, here I am. You've been staying at it full time? Full time, absolutely. Great, great. Since day got one. A couple of young kids. A couple of young in kids, perfect. yeah, they keep me busy. But okay. yeah, real estate is my passion. So. Great. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. And we got Al Shola down there at Remax, right, Al? That's correct, yeah. All right, Al, how many years have you been involved in this? Well, I've been licensed for 11 years. 11 years. Yeah. Okay. I got started when I was 21 years old. Because I was dead broke. <laughs> I was dead broke. And so I went on Craigslist to look for a job. And you see all these rental ads make $10,000 a month renting apartments downtown. And that's what I did. I went, got my license, went downtown, rented apartments. I still recommend people new to the business go and do that because it throws you right into the fire. You learn a ton. Um, I got out for a little while and I got back into it about eight years ago. And I specialize in short sales now. And they're still alive and well. And mm. yeah. Great, great, great. I know you've been a part of our previous realtor panels. I have. This is my second top agent <laughs> panel that I have. So if Al falls asleep, yeah, it's only because yeah, he's a seasoned pro at this. It's all good. He knows when to chime in. Yeah. Awesome. Actually, Al contributed quite a bit. So that's why he's back here again. Give him some great insight. And it's Chris a great hustle routine. Chris kind of me into it, too. So. Did he really? <laughs> <laughs> and down the end, we have Nancy McLaughlin with Redfin. Nancy, how long, how, how long have you been selling real estate for? Well, clearly I'm the veteran, <laughs> um, 25 years, and my, my college degree was in fashion marketing, where I um, worked in New York for an Italian menswear company, and when that didn't work out, I came back to Medford, where I grew up, and my husband said, you know, my friend Bob can do rentals, how about if you, you know, get your real estate license, so the rest is history. And I, um, I had the good fortune of working for developers very early on in my career for about the first 10 years. So I got to know one product really well. And I think if it weren't for that, I don't know if I would have made it in this business. And that, that one product was new construction? New development? construction, yeah. yep. yep. So, so you have a team. Do you have a team right now of people? I do. Okay. I do. The Redfin model is a little bit different than traditional brokerage where we are actually employees of the company. So we are compensated before we ever see a commission by Redfin Corporate. So because of that, you know, we all have very distinct jobs at Redfin and so Redfin actually supports supports me with a team of, um, you know, I've got support staff that get the first call when someone comes in, puts it on my calendar, <coughs> and then I do the consult, and then I've got an admin that's gonna do all the paperwork, and I only see my sellers twice. I strictly work with folks selling, and it is, um, it's very supportive. However, there are certain numbers that I need to reach, and so because of that, they've put in these really good, this unbelievable team. So, so that was actually the question, so thank you for answering it. So because we've got a couple of different models that are here, and, and I want to be able to kind of emphasize those. So do you yourself have any impact on the hiring, or does Redfin itself hire for what you're, you're doing business-wise? Well, Redfin um, does do the hiring of part-time employees that support me at my open houses and showings, and they're kind of the key part of my team because, as you know, we can do all the paperwork. We just don't want to, right? Sure. Um, so I have kind of sifted through different associate agents that Redfin, Redfin is the toughest real estate job I ever got in my life. I mean, it was like being under crazy lights in order to get it because again, I am employed, I'm salaried, full fringe. <coughs> and so because of that, the people that they ch do choose are based on high levels of service and high levels of dedication. So um, I, I have aligned with a couple of key people that share my, my um, ideals for you know the best way to sell real estate 
but the the pool is 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 pretty is pretty big. Okay. All right. Like Thank you. Pool. Yeah. Thank you. So Al, and I know you've got a different model too, and you've got uh, a, a crew that's got an interesting story. So I, I'd be curious to know how you go about choosing a team and what you've done in the past. I can't stand my team. To be <laughs> <laughs> I have a pretty small team. Um, I have a couple guys that cold call, which is really the cornerstone of our business, is calling. So um, it's a small team. I actually, I just got rid of an agent about an hour ago, so it's getting smaller. Uh, you know, we have a couple guys that cold call. We have a couple guys that will go out when they need to. Um, again, we specialize probably half of our business in short sales. A lot of people don't think short sales are out there, but they're alive and well. Kind of similar uh, to Nancy is that we usually don't go to these properties. A lot of times we just, you know, these are kind of what's known as zombie properties. I don't know if you guys have ever heard of this, but they're everywhere. Basically people that either discharge themselves from the personal liability to the debt on a property and maybe moved on during the meltdown or something like that, or someone just vacated a property and left and there's nothing going on with it. I mean, you guys drive by these properties all the time that are boarded up and you know, everyone wants to know kind of what's going on. It's crazy to me how agents don't just go look through the public record and the tools that we have available to us to figure out what the story really is. And that's kind of what we do, mm -hmm. right? So, so we kind of scour for those distressed properties on the short sale end of it. Um, the other market that we kind of specialize in is off-market multi-unit, which is primarily just kind of cold calling. We don't solicit so much for a listing because we do have buyers. So a lot of it's just kind of matching the two up. Yep. Uh, but yeah, so I have a small team. And uh, what I look for right now, to be honest, I'm looking to get rid of them all. No, yeah. no they're, not, they're not bad, but, but managing people and managing a team is not an easy thing. And it's certainly something that you know, I need to uh, brush up on and, and you know make some sort of framework. So, so you're you're looking to get rid of the team model, or you just I think you I need, well, you need look, to reframe look, your managing the, the, skills. I, I shouldn't say that because the team the team is absolutely <laughs> necessary. Yeah, the team has got me where I am. Yeah, right. Like you know, we, we we were the number two Remax team in all of New England last year. And that's because we're a team, right? It was a, a, a collaboration. But yep. you know, you're gonna have good days and bad days. Today was a bad day. So well, so, so that's so so that's a perfect that's a perfect segue though into the next yeah. question. And you know, we all strive for continuous improvement. I mean, I think yeah. that that's what keeps us either you know sitting on the couch and hoping that a deal is going to come Absolutely. our way or staying motivated so Juliet I'm curious what you do to kind of stay on top of your game uh, and the rest of you three are going to answer this question too so so get ready I'd love to see what what know what you do to stay on top of your game and, and strive for continuous improvement oh that's a great question so um, I am a self-development sort of junkie so I also do coaching with Tom Ferry Tom Ferry um, okay. yep um, and in that ecosystem um, I've you know you are the culmination of the top five people, they always say. So I um, participate in the morning on the 5 a.m. East Coast Club. I don't know if anyone does that, but we oh. me meet up on a call at 5 a.m. Every day. Uh, well, I only do it five days a week, but the people who host it do it That to me is every day. <laughs> yeah, well, they do it seven <laughs> days a week now. Um, and, you know, a lot of the people on the call do um, follow the morning miracle, miracle mornings. Yeah, anyone do that? Yep. Yeah. yeah, it's awesome. So, I don't um, do that, it, but I know <laughs> um, I don't do it all the time, but you know, I feel like that sort of sets the tone yep. and keeps me sort of motivated. And you do, you know, all this stuff, your meditation and your yep. visualization, all that jazz. So is that, is that a that. Ryan Snow book? Is that it? Um, Hal Elrod. Ah, that's okay. Yeah. Nice. Ryan Snow. Nice. This is an offshoot. He did, he did one. Lifesavers. Yes. So Chris, yeah. how about you? I know you're 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 big into this. <clears throat> Yeah, actually, I'm, I'm like Juliet. I uh, do a lot of personal development. Um, I think you know, Chris was talking in the team meeting the other day that how everybody should be a productivity coaching in the office, even seasoned veterans. And I'm part of like three group coaching things right now, <laughs> different platforms, different, different coaches, just like a group coaching model. Um, so I do that. I read a lot. Um, I probably read five or six books a month, mo mostly right now business and personal development and things like that. So, um, yeah, so basically that's what I do. I mean, I think that if you're going to keep shop, you have to, you, you like um, someone just said, you can't sit around and wait for the business. Um, I, I mean, the, the top agents in our market center, most of them do some type of personal development. So. Uh, if you don't, you'll definitely stagnate and you'll, you won't keep up. So Yeah, okay, great. Susan? Come um, I also subscribe to the American Morning. That is um, something that I do, yeah. especially with, like, 
you had mentioned I have two small children, so I'm up early anyway. Mm -hmm. So I like to get up around 5, 5.30 in the morning, and that's really when, again, I set my own personal affirmations for the day, mm -hmm. set my goals for what I want to achieve, and really try to accomplish as much as I can before 7.30 in the morning. Yeah. So that way my, my day is planned. I know exactly what I have at, at hand that needs to be accomplished for that day. And um, I'm somewhat of an overachiever, so <laughs> um, rather than, I don't do any coaching, I don't, I don't have that um, model behind me, but every day I just try to make each day better than the last, yeah. so. Is, is everybody on the panel in the self-affirmation working for them every single day? <laughs> yep. Yeah, yeah. Stuart Smalley in the sure. mirror. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's good. That's my favorite. That's good. So, you know, things are changing and, and evolving so quickly in this day and age, and it's mostly technology that's changing. So I'd love to just start with you, Nancy, down the end and just run down the row. What's the one piece of technology, whether it be software or phone or whatever it is that you cannot, well, let's, let's take phone out of the mix because we all can't live without our phone. But what's that one piece of technology that you cannot live without for your business? Is well, it a platform? Is it a system? Is it... Yeah, I, you know, I just, this is still a people business. And so it really, you know, it really needs, the technology needs to help and make it, make it fast and smart and all that, but it still needs to be a really people business. And I do work for a high tech company, so yeah. I, I do have an unfair advantage with the, the amount of tools that I, <clears throat> I do have at my fingertips. So I think just, just the analytics part of, you know, the evolution is, is most powerful in talking to sellers where most of my experience is. That is really the foundation of my, of my success, is just being able to interpret the data the that's data. at my fingertips to, you know, is now the right time, is now not the right time, pricing and, and all of the other important things that go into a presentation. And, winning a, a listing. So you feel Redfin as itself is a technolo technology company provides you all the tools basically to run your business. There's no third party app or tool or anything. So Redfin, Redfin provides you what you need to run your business. You feel satisfied? More than I need, more than I even fully understand, to be yeah. honest with okay. you. <laughs> Perfect. No, that's great. That's great. I mean, because I think that's what that's what a lot of companies are striving to mm. to achieve. I mean, you know, Keller Williams, my company is, is striving to do that too. And it's an ever it's an ever changing landscape. So Al, how about you? So we use a ton of software and tech. Indeed, LinkedIn yeah. for new hires. Oh, no, no, I'm sorry. Uh, no, no, no. Um, so we use a bunch of stuff. I think I talked in the panel last time about, so a lot of people use Gmail. We use Gmail. I don't know if, you know, I'm yep. sure most people do. So there's, there's free plugins you can get. One is called Streak. Mm -hmm. Have you guys ever heard of this? Streak? Yep. Uh, there's one called Folio. Folio, <laughs> anyone ever hear of this? I don't know if Folio can, but you can track when people open emails and stuff like they that. can now, yeah. So we use that. You can program emails. That's free to do too. To go out in like different times. I know you said not the phone as no, a piece okay. of tech. However, we do use a dialer. People use this dialer. It's called Mojo. I think you guys probably heard of Mojo. I was just talking to Don about it. I don't know if Don's here, but we use Mojo. Um, yeah, nothing else really. Uh, you know, like 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 Nancy said. I mean, this is it. Really, is about the people. Yeah. It's about the people. So you know, it's a lot of phone work, and you know. Those are really the two main things right now that we use is Mojo to call and we'll buy data and stuff like that. But. Yeah, yeah. I know Al at the last meeting too gave off a lot of uh, helpful hints with the folio and streak and Gmail. So yeah, like you see someone open the email. I mean, you can call them. Like you know, you send someone an email and all of a sudden you're sitting at your computer at six o'clock at night on a Wednesday and you see that they open that email. You can call them. Oh, hey, I was just thinking about you. And you know, it can. Leverage There's a number of things you can do with it. Sure. Absolutely, leverage yeah. it. Keep piece of, keep uh, in the front of mind. Susan, yeah. how about you? Um, I would say, I mean, I don't think we talked about, but absolutely social media and really utilizing that tool, yeah. um, especially with Instagram and Facebook. A lot of the buyers and sellers that I work with are um, millennials and they're young um, or, you know, that 30 to 35 demographic. So they want to see that you're active, that you're engaging, that you stay top of mind with them. And it's not about just, you know, here's my open house on Sunday, come see it, because no one cares about that. They want to know about you know what's what's happening in Reading that that gets you excited about the town because that's where I, that's where my business is based. So really staying in front of them and showing a genuine excitement about the business. Yeah. So really those those two platforms are huge for me. Okay, great, thank you, Chris. How about you? I don't use technology. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Um, <clears throat> so I uh, 
I use a platform <clears throat> called Commissions Inc., which is like a boom oh, town yeah. and some of these other platforms. It's expensive, but I generate a ton of leads. Um, I'm kind of feeling the same frustration as Al is as far as the team thing, yeah. but I won't go yeah. there. Um, I don't know what's launching. But it's, uh, <laughs> yeah. they, they probably will be. It's ready. But, um, no, this it's, is live, it's, right? It's, no, it's, <laughs> no, no, it's all good. We'll, we'll make a progress. We haven't fight anyone in a while. Um, but, but yeah, I use that as a, I mean, it's a whole platform, a CRM plus, and it, it does a lot of the same things when the property updates. I mean, I get notifications if they look at the same property more than three times. So then I can give them a call and say, hey, I found this great property for you. And <laughs> they think you're psychic when you, uh, yeah. you know, they haven't really caught on yet to the whole big data thing that I already yeah. knew what they were. Of course, you never tell them you know that they looked at it. Um, but, you know, there's, there's, there's so many tools built into that, including a dialer, which I think is very important. And um, so, yeah, that's the main one, probably. It has a really good app that I can run completely from my phone. I could not log into the website for a month and still do business. So, yeah. Well, um, a good yeah, mobile so integration. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, very good. So, okay, all right, Juliet, how about you? Um, I probably I, I subscribe to sort of everything. Yeah. So, um, I can be sold on anything. But I, the the one thing that's really helped me is Bomb Bomb. Um, I hate cold calling as much as I love the idea of a dialer. Sly dials more my speed. <laughs> um, but I found that the video um, component of Bomb Bomb helps sort of bridge that the warmth factor mm -hmm. um so when people get to know me i, I do pretty well but it, the cold calling part doesn't really work for me and they have landing pages that you can use for open houses drip campaigns so and it, it will f dissect those lists and to help you manage them and they will tell you and show you if they've opened something if they've mm -hmm. clicked the video what links they've they've done so i've loved bomb bomb yeah mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. I, I too have, uh, have been a long time user of Bomb Bomb, and it gives you the analytics. It gives you the wow factor up front, but then, for me, it it eliminates spell check because I'm just mm -hmm. dictating the video there all the time. Um, yeah. But it's a great tool, and we can talk about that when we get to kind of social media. Mm -hmm. So, Susan, I'd be curious to know what the biggest challenge you've had to overcome so far in the industry has been, and how did you overcome it? Um, biggest challenge. Well, I feel like with every transaction that we have, there's always a challenge. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, to say that this is an easy job, um, if that was the case, then I think everybody here would be producing, you know, tens of millions of dollars every year. But um, the biggest challenge, I think, is because I work so closely with, um, not to say friends, but my, my network, so I'm a young mom, and a lot of my clients are also young moms, young families. And the challenge that I have sometimes is that um, we become very close in the transaction. And I think that's actually what has made me so successful is that I take a very personal investment in each one of my clients that I work with. So sometimes the challenge is making sure that, that we maintain a professional relationship, yet a genuine relationship, that yeah. they know that I'm, I'm fighting for them. But on the other hand, that you know, this is not this is not my house that I'm buying. This is their home. So guiding them in that direction, but still maintaining a level of professionalism that, sure. that allows me to be the realtor and then the client. Sure. I mean, so. we get so heavily invested in the Absolutely. process. It's, it's hard not it's to hard. become emotional yeah. about it's it. But, hard. yeah, you've got to find that line. Absolutely. Nancy, how about you? I think managing expectations is, is pretty important. <laughs> um, and just realizing that this is a, a roller coaster ride you know, that there's so many emotions involved and trying not to be, um, put your emotions into it because if you've got a seller, a buyer, you know, two agents, attorneys, and every, you know, the sellers and buyers each have families and jobs that if we need to take our personalities out of it and really do what we can to also, you know, be a psychologist but not beaten down, <laughs> you know, you also need to have a really strong mutual respect and so I think when we're working with people that don't necessarily have that mindset, it can be very frustrating and you can be you know, pretty far along in the sale and then it can just go awry. So setting realistic expectations at the beginning with buyers and sellers about you know, what to expect in the process can certainly help with different challenges that, that you'll face along the way. Um, you know, one of the things that I've learned over the years, I've, I've been selling real estate since 2005, and, and my approach to business has shifted quite a bit throughout the years, but it's the business-to-business -business sphere that's really kind of proven very fruitful for me. So I'd be curious from 
the remaining three of you, uh, uh, what is the, your best affiliate relationship and, and, and who would it be? Is it, is it your attorney? Is it your lender? <coughs> is, it, uh, is it your home inspector, Al? So for us, it's definitely the attorneys. I mean, the attorneys are, you know, we, when we're dealing with short sales, it's even more so about the people than the property than ever. And so we typically have an attorney, you know, um, help us guide the deal along. We really won't move forward without an attorney involved. And we do a ton of referrals. You know, we refer a lot of deals out to like the western part of the state or like Worcester and stuff like that. And we have a good group of referral agents at the moment that we refer business out to. So those are good affiliates and, and attorneys on the other side that are referring us to us business. So yeah, yeah probably um, our best affiliates would probably be the attorneys, yeah. Okay, Chris, how about you? Yeah, I, I think um, probably the attorneys. I had a, I'm doing a, uh, I have a transaction going on right now where um, the lender was already chosen by the buyer and I'm representing the buyer and uh, I made the mistake of, they asked me who I wanted to use for the attorney and I should have just said one of my guys who I knew was on the list and I didn't. And it actually turned into a little bit of a cluster because it took about a week and a half to, for him to get back to me with who his attorney was and I was just out of my mind. It took over two weeks to get the PNS signed. These poor people are from out of state. They're like, this is the, we've sold, bought and sold six houses. Massachusetts is the worst and it's like, you know, so. Um, so yeah, it really brought home to me like I should have I should have just immediately just picked my guy who I knew was on the list and I was trying to defer a little bit to the loan officer and uh, I won't make that mistake again. Yeah. So okay. attorneys are very important and loan officers obviously I think pro probably co-equal in my mind. Yeah. 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 How about you, Juliet? Um, of course you need your team. It always goes smoothly when you have your team, like the loan officer and the attorney. Um, as far as sort of getting reciprocal business from them I, I don't really that doesn't really work for me but um, just because they have so many people they work with um, but I do a lot of networking I have um, I'm very passionate about um, helping other small businesses and I feel like I've, I've generated some referrals for that I run a, um, a women's business networking group Mm -hmm. uh, so that's been those affiliations are really powerful yeah. and and not only sustaining my own business and uh, momentum but in referrals as well okay yeah mm -hmm. <clears throat> and, that, and that's I, I, I am very involved in business networking as well so it's a good segue as well in this so <clears throat> we all have to have different channels of business coming in to fill our lead channel and we just do whether it's social or whether it's you know your your marketing campaign your your physical marketing campaign if you can break it down into two, both non-internet related and internet related, what are your two greatest streams of lead gen for your business? And if you just have one that comes to mind, that's great. But if you could break it down into kind of old fashioned way, you know, shake hands and then maybe a social one, maybe an internet related, that'd be great. I'd just love to go down the, the line starting with you, Julia. Um, well, I, t I, I invest a lot in my past clients in my sphere, yeah. the traditional stuff, the parties, the mailers, the n newsletters, all that jazz. I think yeah. we all do that. Um, my networking is another one. I just started a farm, um, so that I'm new to that, and I have about 600 um, addresses in that farm, so I'll let What's you know What's your logic goes. in going after that farm, just an area you want to conquer? Um, what I did from last, from <coughs> the, around the fa last year, I chose um, four properties and sort of spread from there that I had listed. So I'm sort of, I'm sort of shooting by the hip on that sure. one. But it's sort of it's it's ta it's taking traction, so it's good. Of, but it's of, new to me. Of those, where do you get your most leads from? Um, definitely my sphere. Your sphere. Yeah, and past clients for sure. How about you, Chris? I um, <clears throat> I didn't get to answer the biggest challenge thing, but uh, my biggest challenge <laughs> in real estate was when the market crashed. <laughs> you know, when the market crashed uh, in 08, it was I mean it was horrible <laughs> because I had come to really embrace technology. And I had lost the personal touch. Mm -hmm. So when the leads started, when the internet leads dried up and I hadn't kept in touch and I started going through, like looking up past clients and, oh, wow, they sold that house? They didn't call me? And, you know, that happens a lot if you don't keep in touch. So uh, I have found that my two biggest uh, personal referrals, I, I've tried to embrace technology without losing the personal touch. And so my referral business has gone up significantly over the last few years. So it's... You know, probably 50-50 between the online lead gen and my referrals. So, okay. all right, awesome. You know. 
I knew you'd segue into that. That's why I left it. <laughs> well, we can get lost in like the technology is great, but even like what Nancy said is like, you know, Redfin's big on technology, but she's right. Like you have to keep mm -hmm. the personal touch with the clients or all the technology in the world doesn't matter if you don't have that relationship with the people. Which is, which is, you know, just kind of focusing on what, what Juliet said, and I was talking about about video. For, for me, I find that that's, that allows that humanization factor to still stay in play in a social world, mm -hmm. and that's where video is going to be huge, huge component, so I'm curious to know that. So, Susan, how about, how about you? Um, so, like I had mentioned, so I live in Reading. My business is based in Reading. Our office is right across the street. So I try to remain hyper-local to this area. My mm -hmm. husband grew up in Wakefield, so that's another um, market that I'm, <coughs> that I'm very active in. And so I'm involved with several mom groups. So I go to, mm -hmm. you know, we do play dates and, and that sort of thing. So that really has been a huge lead generation um, avenue for me. So again, when they know that I'm the local realtor in Reading that has small children that they relate to. And because of that, I've had numerous, numerous leads come through that. And it's, it's interesting that some of these people have never even worked with me directly, but because they know that I'm active in this market and they see that, you know, well, she's had a lot of success, well, she must be doing something right. Sure. There's a mom that wants to, a family that wants to move in town, I know the girl to call. Sure. So um, that's, been, that's been huge for me. Okay, all right. Al, how about you? I would say probably all of our business outside of the <coughs> referrals we get from attorneys, so it's probably like 90% of it is calling, cold calling. Cold it's calling? Oh, cold calling, yeah. Pick up the phone and calling and like you said, I mean, it's a personal touch, right? So yep. when people hear you and they talk to you, and crazy part is realtors aren't doing it. No. <laughs> Agents really aren't doing it. Do you yeah, they're getting blasted on social media by the newest campaign or video, but, but is someone actually calling them and talking to them about mm -hmm. this? It seems like we're the only ones out there that are doing it. We do get, you know, so once in a while we hear that people, oh, yeah, we just got a call from so-and-so, but it's rare. It's rare. There's, there, we're not scratching the surface, and there's probably more opportunity there for agents to get business than anywhere. On cold calling. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I mean, everyone's buying into bomb bomb and, and stuff like Not to say it's not effective, but, mm -hmm. you know, it does get saturated at some point. Sure. Are you, right? guys, are you guys following scripts to a T? Not to a T, um, but we absolutely do have a framework. And I mean, look, a script is something that we, we absolutely put together what we consider to be a T, and then it, it molds every person, depending on what they're calling for. You know, they get comfortable with what it is they're going to say and, you know, becomes repetitive and like second nature. Okay. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Nancy, how about you? My story is completely different. 98% of my leads are from the internet. And our data, our analytics department has found, and so the, the way it, this works is that if a customer engages with you, you basically have about two hours mm -hmm. in which to respond to them. And so we have this support, we've got hundreds of support people that are ready to engage and get someone out to be able to tour with that person, you know, potentially within 24 hours. And it is, it is very effective. If I wasn't seeing it firsthand, I would say you're crazy. But the power of a good website is more powerful than anything for, for the low-lying fruit. Now, of course, there is that. For me, at this point, it's about 3%, which is referral. And it's honestly because I don't want it. Um, because with the clients that I get at my company, these people are making decisions within two days, and they are on the market within a couple of weeks. So are you, uh, uh, you're obviously the benefactor of that lead gen system that's in place with Redfin. Are you familiar with how they're kind of going about getting it, the intricacies of that machine? Well, it's, it's an engineer-based company. Yeah. So these engineers are just constantly, you know, monitoring each, each click and what is sticking and what isn't. And yeah. that is, the, that's the power is just having a different brain, you know, who's thinking just in terms of data's clicks and how quick and w what is, what engages people and what doesn't. Now at the end of the day, you know, to close the deal and have someone like you, you have to, you know, engage people. But like I said, that right now, it is, it is a very, very powerful, powerful tool. Yeah, okay. And that's a good segue too. I just want to take a quick break for one second. And uh, we've, we've introduced Mike Conway in Conway Law. Um, would have loved to get your, uh, your face up here to go ahead and say a few words, but your partner in crime here is Andrew Marquis with Guaranteed Rate, 
who has also sponsored uh, this event as well. The mics already talked, so come on up, Andrew. How are you? Other partner in crime. Okay, great. So, just want to thank everyone for coming tonight. It's been a great evening thus far, and I think what's great about sales um, is just sharing the ideas. You know, everyone's got a different method of how they're succeeding in the market. And um, you know, I spoke in Bahamas on our our company trip a couple months ago, and <coughs> six of us spoke in front of the whole company, and everyone has a different way of doing it. So it's just really unique, you know, to be able to grab some of those ideas, modify them, uh, and make it work for your, what you're doing. You know. Um, quick comment on the team thing. I know everyone's kind of trashing their team tonight. Uh, uh, I have a great team, and uh, if you have the right people and you can acclimate them and you can really leverage them and do more sales, it can be a great thing. So, uh, again, I'm Andrew Marquis, Guaranteed Rate. I've been in the business about 15 years. So, thanks so much, everyone, and uh, happy to be here to support. Thank you both. You've, you've, you've done this multiple times, and I think it's an incredibly fruitful event for all uh, the members in the audience and also for our panel members as well. And Susan's the only one that doesn't have to go home and fire anybody tonight. <laughs> I love my team. I love you guys. Um, who's on social media? Business-wise, what are you on? Want to share a little bit about your strategy with social media? We'll start with you, Juliet. Um, I am on Facebook and Instagram. Um, I do do Twitter only because it links from those platforms, mm -hmm. um, but I'm not active on Twitter. Um, I've started some, we're trying to focus more on video. We have um, Tuesday, 10 minute tips on Tuesdays at 10 a.m. Usually doesn't happen at 10 a.m. and it's usually either 20 minutes or two minutes, so <laughs> whatever. Um, and then on Fridays we do um, interviews with our networks of um, businesses or um, vendors. It's called Favorite Folks Fridays. I like my my little alliterations. I think that's what it is. Yeah. Um, and so we've done that consistently this year, um, which has been really really great. So I think. Just the consistency. I can't tell you if the content's any good. Fridays are great. <laughs> Tuesdays, mm, uh, the, the, the goal was to have people write in the questions, like, we're going to answer your questions next week. And we didn't get a single question. So we're just making stuff up at quarter to 10, That's you know? Perfect. So, but it's fun. Um, but people look forward to it. And from there, we boost the posts. So we've, we're getting between 1,500 and 2,500 views. Have you ventured into Instagram uh, boosting or just with Facebook boosting? Um, I'll boost some on Instagram, but not consistently. I have to get to that. Okay. All right. Christopher, how about you? I just very primitively use Facebook as far as business. But, I mean, for me, I have a business page, and I'll share posts from that on my personal, which I know you're probably not supposed to do, but whatever. I throw enough pictures of my cute kids on there that I think people nice. allow me a little grace. But, um, I mean, I found that it mainly it just keeps me top of mind with, like, people. I mean, I just got two listings from a friend from grade school and high school. who mm -hmm. I She reached out to me on Facebook Messenger and, you know, do you do Somerville? I'm like, yep. <laughs> two listings, about a million nice. and a half in business, and uh, quick and easy. And so... Um, you know, uh, so again, mainly from a referral standpoint, it just keeps people top of mind. With, I try not to push it too much, but, um, you know, it, it's enough because I'm more looking for the referral business. I'm not really, I mean, my website does do Facebook advertising as well, but that's, I have, they handle that. So yeah. I get a lot of leads, probably about 50% of my leads right now from Facebook. So Really? Okay. Yeah. Right. So. Through your portal? Through your yeah. thing? Yeah. Oh. But I have no, it's between Google and Facebook and the Facebook leads seem to take a lot longer to convert, so we'll see. I'm kind of analyzing it. Are you, are you leveraging lead gen campaigns within Facebook? Or? Oh, yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. All right. Susan, how about you? Um, definitely, definitely Facebook <coughs> and Instagram. Um, I would say, I mean, last year alone, almost more than half of my business came from, from yeah. social media. And so with, especially with listings, doing coming soon teasers, um, that's really, really been, been successful for me. And anytime that there is a new listing, boosting those posts is really important. And again, like, I think I actually watch your videos. <laughs> They're very cool. But again, it's back to that top of mind marketing. And again, yeah. when people know that you are active in this market, that this is what you do full time, um, they like to see your, your recently sold, so your recently listed. I mean, those things people, they, they enjoy to see. I recently did an uh, Instagram video where I was in a baseball cap. 
and I had more interaction from that post than almost any other post that I've done this year. So again, just being genuine and, and showing showing your personality because at the end of the day, I mean, <coughs> sure, they, they hire you based on your experience, and but it's really, do they like you? And do they trust you? And can they relate it's to you? That so, humanization factor. Absolutely. And it's that so allows, allows, it, allows so it to be important. done. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. So uh, uh, Al and Nancy, what are your goals for 2018? I know we're kind of well into it, but what have you set for goals for this year? 2018, we'd like to do 75 million in volume. Yeah. That's a goal we, we set. Okay. How far is that above what you did last year? We did 50 last year. Okay. So we do 75, yeah. We did the math on that. Okay, so that's good. (laughs) Nancy. I think in terms of what kind of project I'd like to do on my house. (laughs) (laughs) So last year it was my glam closet. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I've just been at this for... No she shed? (laughs) <laughs> Not yet, Plan but maybe closet. this year. <laughs> no, seriously. Um, my oh, they're very glammy. Um, my goal is going to be to serve as many people as I can and just, you know, keep at this as, as long as I can. I'm a veteran at this, so yeah. I don't want to keep doing this forever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, we appreciate the honesty. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Susan, what's your um, what's your biggest weakness in this industry? My biggest weakness. Um, so I would say not making enough time for me. Yeah. <laughs> um, I I have a very easy time saying yes to my clients. It's very easy for me to say yes all the time. Um, it's hard for me to say no to them, but yet it's easy for me to say no to my to my family and my friends yeah and that is that is definitely um, my biggest challenge right now is really taking time off from this business um, I don't do that enough yeah. um, one thing that people always say about me is that oh wow she's so responsive she's all oh, she always gets back to me and that's really important but the flip side of that is I shouldn't be answering calls at six o'clock and that's something that I am trying not to do. Yeah. And actually, that when we talk about goals, that's my goal for this year. Yeah. My goal is to not work every Saturday, not work every Sunday. So um, I want to give you the, you know, if I'm going to ask you that question, I want to ask you the opposite. What's your biggest strength as well? Um, you may have just answered it too. Yeah, I, I mean, absolutely. Response time is, is huge. It's huge. Like I had mentioned, I work with a lot of young buyers. And for them, they want instant. They want to know now. They don't want to wait. Um, I think that's why Redfin has been so successful because they have that quick response time. For, so for me, that's really important. I mean, yeah. one of my greatest tools is is this watch right here. Yeah. I can instantly respond to people. I don't need my phone. Um, so for me, that that is one of my my greatest strengths. And aside from that, obviously being being knowledgeable in the market, being knowing that um, you know I don't I don't work in areas that I don't know. I, like I had mentioned, I'm, I'm hyper local, so I really try to master this this immediate area. So that is again one of my strengths as well. And um, I'm very sincere. I absolutely love this business, and I love yeah. my clients, and and they know that. Yeah. They know that. So we we all have had a good amount of time in the industry. This is kind of a little segue off of it, but based on your question, we've all seen you know those come to moments where you realize that it's not about the hustle 24/7. That finally you've got to find some some balance. Have you all? hit that? I mean, you've got some experience in this industry. Would you say, in hindsight, it's worth the hustle, or you, you're you much happier with that work-life balance? I, both ends of the table, I'd like to have mm-hmm. answered that. So, Nancy? Um, it's, it, it's very exciting. I mean, there's nothing better than, you know, winning a deal, and there's nothing better than winning a consult, and, and then there's nothing worse when it goes the other way. So, but um, at the end of the day, I really do like to help people, and I get a really good satisfaction from it. Um, I wouldn't like it to all be in a couple of months. It would be nice if it were a little bit more scattered. Mm -hmm. But in our business in the Northeast, that's the way it is, so. Yeah, okay. Juliet, how about you? Um, I I probably much like Susan, or like everyone, I think we love this business, and it's easy to get swept up in it all of the time. Um, certainly there's regrets where you sacrifice, you know, your family and your friends. Um, you don't mean to, but you do. And then there's that feast and famine. Most of us have been through the crash. Mm-hmm. 
<laughs> you know, before the crash, there was all this talk about life work balance and the crash happened and we're like, get everything you can. I don't care. I'll yeah, work exactly. till midnight. Just give me something. Exactly. Yeah. And so, and, and I'm still scarred from the crash. So I, I'm like, Oh, well, just get it while you can take it. Um, and I often say that I'm like Lucy in the, the chocolate factory, you know, sticking chocolates down your shirt. Just, we just get it while you can, because this can't go on forever. But, um, so, but, it's fun. This business is fun. I love the business part of it. I love the marketing part of it. And so it's hard to turn that off. Um, but I think as far as the practice and self-development, you do recognize that you have to sort of turn it off a little bit. Yeah. I'm not great at it. Yeah. But um, the assembly line's still cranking, so <laughs> we got to do stuff. Well, that's, that's good. So, Chris, I know how you operate. I'm very admirable of your business and your analytics and insight into the industry. And Al, this question's going to go to you as well. Where do you think the market's heading? What's your perspective on it? Uh, I I don't. I think it's going to keep going strong for the next few years. But then again, I thought the same thing in like oh six oh seven. So <laughs> I might not be the one to ask because uh, <clears throat> I went from steak dinners to ramen noodles really quickly. <laughs> so you know, from the penthouse to the outhouse and back to the penthouse. So. Uh, I'd like to think that I think from what I've read, I mean, the fundamentals of the economy are a lot stronger than they were last time. And it's as long as they don't, I get nervous every time I see some new zero down program and no doc loan or whatever. But um, I think if that stuff is, uh, you know, held to a minimum, I, I mean, I don't, I mean, I think I talk to people every day and there's definitely just a sense of, of people feeling good about the economy right now and people are anxious to make a move. So, um, you know, basically, pretty much almost all the homes, I, I mean, I think I read a stat that like 94% of the homes in the U.S. have positive equity again. So um, I'm hopeful that it's going to continue. Yeah. But I also feel like I, well, I've, like I mentioned a few minutes ago, when the market turned last time, I had not kept up with people and I had not been very good about maintaining my database. And so I think this time around, regardless of what happens, I'll be, I'll be good. Yeah, so. and Alan, I want to ask you that question, but I wanted to just kind of add a little point into this. I was talking with an agent out of our office, and she said that you know she she felt so bad that she hadn't reached out to some clients in a long time, and just just got inside of her head and didn't didn't continue to respond, and then just let it kind of grow and grow. And mm -hmm. she actually happened to run into that person, and that person was saying like, "Oh my God, I've been meaning to reach out to you. You've been on my mind so much, and here we've gotten so much inside of our own head mm -hmm. that we just choose not to maybe follow up or go to that degree." And probably us just kind of blocking ourselves but so Al what's your perspective on where the market's going to be heading I mean I think it's about to shit the bed to be honest with you I mean we, we you know we All right we, show's we, over we, we, uh, <laughs> oh you can't you can't no. Uh, no truth, truth so, so, so truth look we did over a hundred and something short sales last year like I Have said, you seen the short sale market? It's, though? It's, it's, it's going crazy. Like, we don't even want to do it. We're, we're referring the most of them out. I mean, you can. This is all public data. I mean, if you look up, like um, the government used to have all these programs. But can, can I just ask you a question? Sure. More so now because you think there are more, or more so now because you understand how to get to them quicker. No, I mean the the data has always been there. It's extremely easy to figure out who's behind on the mortgage. I can tell you that there are more people behind the mortgage today in Massachusetts that we see from the data that we're using, which is public record, than there were in 2012. Really? Who shoveled that mantra that short sales have slowed down? Yeah, every, everyone thinks short sales are not there. Yeah. And and they are there. And actually, if you follow things like there's a, the Making Homes Affordable program, which is like a government, it was a governmental program, and now it's just like this shell of a, a news outlet. But they're, they're talking about how foreclosure levels in New York are at 2009 levels. Yeah. Mm -hmm. New York, I can understand, maybe, yeah. but... But I mean, look, you can go on Zillow and you can search any state or any territory. You, you see those, those potential listings, I think they call it on Zillow. It's the pre foreclosure yeah, is what, yeah. it, what it shows. And, no, and it's crazy because agents don't even know what it means and people don't know what it means. And they don't know, does that mean the property's for sale? Is it an auction or whatnot? But what that is, that's syndicated data of what's called the petition to foreclose, mm -hmm. so that first step in the foreclosure process. Yeah. What's syndicated in Massachusetts, because we know exactly what the numbers are, is about six months worth of data. Yeah. And across the United States. So when you pull up these states and you see there's 10,000 pre, that's in the past six months. Mind you, our average client's 40 months behind on their mortgage. So that's just getting added to 
the okay. pipeline that we're barely scratching the surface of right now. Are you getting more from the pre-foreclosure process? Because pre-foreclosure is the bank saying, sellers, get your crap together. Correct. We're going to foreclose on you. Foreclosure process so, is done. So, you know, low-hanging fruit are the auctions. You know, when the bank gets to the point where they actually set the auction, you can typically get listings scouring that list and soliciting that homeowner um, with the um, tools or the resources and knowledge necessary to help them stop that foreclosure auction mm -hmm. to potentially pursue short sale as a means to keep the economy in the neighborhood up, you know, maybe be a little bit less on uh, less of a hit on their credit, yeah. um, maybe to get some some, uh, you know, definitive information, clarity as to what they can expect as it relates to the deficiency, you know, what they're actually selling it for and what the bank is actually owed at the time. Um, but we kind of took, a, you know, the foot off the gas on auctions and we call more pre foreclosure stuff. You know, it's certainly less of a sense of urgency, but you know, it's a mess right now. Like I said, my small team is not very big and we are barely scratching the surface and we're doing a ton of them. There's plenty of room for more people to do them all across the United States. And, yeah. and I'm close with the other people in the state that specialize in short sales too. And you know, it's, it's really kind of a free-for-all because there's not a lot of people that specialize in it. And there's yeah. this kind of idea that short sales are gone, right? There's yeah. no more short sales and it's, uh, you know, they're everywhere. Yeah, Everybody. but it's a good perspective. Thank you. Yeah. I want to give you three an opportunity. Do you have a perspective? Any of you have a perspective you want to share as to where you think the market might be heading? If not, I can move right on to the next question. Mm -hmm. Just going to ride it. Yeah. Let it ride. I think let it ride. Nobody wants yeah. to follow Al's. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, sorry, sorry for the doom and, glo doom and gloom prediction here. That's okay. That's okay. What current book are you reading right now? Oh, I'm reading a lot of books. Yeah, anyone you want to recommend? Um, I'm a, I'm a huge brandscaping um, a believer. That's um, by Andrew Davis. Uh, and, um, you know, I want to finish as a conversion code. I really like that one okay. with Chris Smith. Okay, mm -hmm. all right. Chris? Yeah, I actually just read the conversion code again. I've read it a few times. Mm -hmm. um, that's a really good book. I'm reading a, uh, I hesitate, I don't want to say in front of Susan because she'll go get it and <laughs> use it, but there's a book called The Hyper Local, Hyper Fast Real Estate Agent. It's a really, really good book. Um, it's written by a guy in Maryland who uh, left left a business job and went into real estate and within a year did like $22 million as a brand new agent just by targeting a hyper local uh, so that's a freebie Thank for you. you. <laughs> um, You're welcome. But it's it's a very very good book. The guy's very very sharp. Um, lots of good insights in the book. So, okay. Susan, um, I'm reading Green Eggs and Ham. Um, <laughs> yeah. It's got a great under, message. Captain Underpants. Yeah. 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 I don't really have much time. I, I wish I did. That's all good. That's all good. <laughs> You're bringing back bringing things back to basics. Right, right. Yeah. You've got to yeah. center yourself. I know. I read I read a lot of online articles, but books. Uh, I'm a big Audible guy. I don't know if you guys yeah. do Audible or yeah. not, but Audible has made it pretty easy to consume books pretty quick. So I've got a bunch of them on there and, you know, just bounce around between a lot. I do a lot of Grant Cardone. I don't know if you guys do a lot of Grant Cardone. I, I love I Grant Cardone. Yeah, yeah. I, make, I make, that's right, I forgot we have the common ground. Yeah. But I make every one of the team members, they have to listen to 10X. And some of them make them listen oh, to it over and over and over book. again. And, and Nancy, I know yours is How to Build a Glam Closet, so it's fine. <laughs> no, no, go ahead. Nancy, what is, what, do you have a book you're reading right now you want to um, share? Well, the book that's on my bed stand um, is Option B by Sheryl Sandberg. Uh -oh. Okay. All right. When Option A doesn't work. <laughs> and Option A doesn't yeah. work. I'd be curious um, how you all uh, have handled, is there one instance uh, in your minds um, where you've had some conflict in how you've handled it? I actually want to give this to Juliet. You had any issues of conflict with some clients? And let me ask, maybe you've had to say that you weren't the right fit for them or they weren't the right fit for you, <laughs> how you've handled that? Uh, well, you know, I think I've matured in my, my, my career. But I did have, I had this one guy, I'm like, I'm done. He was just such a jerk and then he manipulated the contract and it was going up for, and I said to my husband in his truck, I said, you come with me because you're going to, pick the sign up out of the yard when I, while I'm in there because I'm, I'm firing myself. This is crazy. And so I said, this isn't working out. This is not a good fit. And the wife, her jaw just dropped. And then they said, give us another month. And they begged. And I said, my husband's like pulling up the side, like, get in the car, get in the car. So I tried to fire myself very unsuccessfully. And 
yeah, I tried. I said, yeah. we're not a good fit. And that was, it was really hard. And um, I sold the house. I think that's usually a turning point for most customers when they it see really you. It really is. It was a coach yeah. Jesus moment yeah, yeah, for sure. Ab absolutely. Susan, do you have anything that comes to mind? Um, I have to say, I've been, I've been very fortunate. I've had some yeah. really, really, really good people. Um, but I did have one buyer actually recently who just was pulling me in all different directions. And it's been, I think I've been working for like 10 months now. And they called me recently and said, um, don't fire us, please, please. We need you. Don't fire us. Just stick in, hang in there with us. So, but for the most part, I've, I've been pretty fortunate. That's yeah. great. Yeah. That's great. So I've been given word to go ahead and wrap it on up here. But I wanted to first thank all of you. I wanted to thank our sponsors, Michael Conway and Andrew Marquis. Thank you so much. What's that? Yeah, we're going to open up to a Q&A. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but I wanted, before we open it up to a Q&A, I wanted to just have each of you give your URL for your website and how people can get a hold of you. So if you just want to run down Sure, mine is julietandcoco.net. Okay, perfect. Chris? It's uh, searchforbostonhomes.com. Search for Boston Good. Homes. Okay, mm -hmm. Susan? Uh, Susan Gormady. G-O-R-M-A-D-Y. There's no N, no matter how hard you try. It's not going to my name. Dot com. Al? I, I, we don't even have, we do have a website, but we don't use it. Uh, I'm just alshuler at gmail.com. Nice and easy. Just look for Al. <laughs> Google Al. That's it. And he'll know when you open his easy email. To, <laughs> easy to find. I'll know exactly when you search for me. You'll get a text right away. You were just on the top of my mind, yeah, Tim. Just thinking about you. I was just thinking about you. Nancy? Yep. Another funny question for me. Yeah. <laughs> Redfin.com. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes, exactly. Do you do you get to individually brand yourself at least on social media? Do you have do you have compliance you have to adhere to? When I was first onboarding, I went to the Seattle office and I had this great website. I mean, I had my sphere, I had all of it. And this was five years ago. And they said, Nope. <clears throat> nope. None of it. So it's just so different. It is just I don't know. I don't know if I can even impart any wisdom because I've just been so away from the traditional model for. That's good. I mean, I, so I think long. in this day and age, it's safe to say there was really no traditional model anymore. Right. Is, Except okay. is now where we shotgun Zima? Is that it, Chris? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. We got to open it up to Q and A right now. So I want to open it up to the audience. Does anybody have any questions for the panel members? You have anybody that wants to throw some questions yeah, their way? Did. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, so you guys are all been in the business for quite some time, but. When you first started, how did you grow your business that first year? Like, how did you make a success out of your business that first year? Anyone want to jump on these? Al? I, I like mean, here? the same thing we do now is, is I mean, to, to be told, I don't personally do a ton of cold calling unless I have a client for it. So now I hire people, but that's what I did. I cold called for myself, right, to start, and then hired someone to do the cold calling. And then, I'd be, I'd be curious, actually, if I could just take that a little bit further. <clears throat> I hesitate to call it a, a, a boiler room style, but you are crunching mm -hmm. the phones. Yeah, like we, we use the dialer, and a lot of people use, you know, you can get data from companies like BreadX or um, Intellius or, you know, all of these different ways, and you load it into a dialer, and yeah, it's just when sit you, there and just dial. When you we were hand dialing for many years. That's what we did. Mm -hmm. and now, with dialers being so easy and cheap, now we use the dialer. But when you got into real estate, did you know that that was your strong suit, that you had no fear when it came to dialing your phone numbers? Absolutely. Well, so, it, was, it was like, you know, you have to do it. You got to do what you got to do. Yeah. And, and there's no question about it. Like, picking up the phone is the most definitive path to success in real estate. There's Who, not, I mean, if you pick up the phone every day, you will get and do deals. Yeah. As everybody would, with the exception of Nancy. With the exception of Nancy, yeah. Would you say <laughs> that that's your number one lead gen source? Or it is... No, is I'm it terrified of it. Terrified, yeah. I mean, most people are. It's not a... You have to call. As soon as a lead comes in, you can't text, you can't email, you have to call. Absolutely. You have to call. That's but, your first but thing. But what we're talking is getting, a, getting a, a, a clean list and just yeah. calling on the phone. Yeah, calling on the phone yeah. book. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. I would rather die than cold call. <laughs> Let me just say that. <laughs> I only... I mean, I'll call I leads that come in, but I won't cold call. And I never have. I have my... You know, when I first got in the business, my broker handed me a phone book and was like, here you go, you know, the kind of corny story. But it was true in my case. And I was like, there's got to be a better way. So I did I did mailers. And, and I just, every lead that did, I just, I, I shadowed open houses. I shadowed other agents. And I just figured out real quick what worked. I figured out, you know, the thing is, is that um, it's not a one-size-fits-all business, obviously. So... You need to figure out what your strengths are and then cater to those strengths. And then if there's something that doesn't work for you but that works for someone else, well, 
you know, share the wealth, you know, work together. Or So there's, there's you know, I would net, I have two different dialers I use, but it's only for like incoming leads. Well, I shouldn't say that. I do prospect expires and FISBOs, but even then that's, I consider that more of a warm lead. Yeah. So okay. anyone else? Well, my coach wanted me to door knock. He's been saying this for oh. months. I finally hit the bricks, but it's more like leafleting. I'm like, oh, what, what, what house has no Before cars? The door. Exactly. <laughs> I'm looking for no cars here. <laughs> and so my assistant, she's, there's no shame in her game. So she would hit, I'm like, I'm going to get the houses with no cars. You get the houses with the cars. Oh, it's terrible. Um, so that's not my thing. It's, it's, it's not a lot of people's things. <laughs> you know? Anyone else have another question? Have another one? Rebecca? I probably don't need the mic. Uh, my question. They want it. My question is for Al. Al. Oh, okay. Al. Okay. <laughs> what is the uh, average price point of short sales these days? That's a great question that I don't even know the answer to. <laughs> I have no, you know, I mean, look, we, I, I was telling somebody here earlier, like, we list properties all over the place, especially with short sales. What Nancy said is so true which is that it's so much about the people. It's about the people, the deal, the bank. It doesn't really matter about the property. We list it on MLS and the market dictates what the price is gonna be. You know, even as far as like pricing these short sales, you know, we, we do our best to, to figure out what it probably is worth, looking at comps in the area and doing CMAs and stuff like that. But ultimately we know the market's gonna dictate that. And as a primarily seller rep that our office does, um, I guess we don't pay a lot of attention to it. I mean, it's not big money. I mean, we have million dollar short sales, don't get me wrong, that we close. Um, but the average is probably like 250, 300, would you say, Joe? What yeah, do you think? What, what would you say across the board is the commission that you get? Okay, so that's a good point. I don't know how I was supposed to say that, Joe. But. <laughs> so short sales. Joe's not getting fired today. No, no. <laughs> Joe, 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 by the way, we didn't talk about Joe, but Joe, Joe Colantino is another attorney here who's going to be working with, with, with Mike Conway, and Joe is one of my top short sale attorneys. Joe probably has 30, 40 short sales with me right now that Joe is the seller rep on. Uh, so Joe sees the deals, and he knows what we do and whatnot. And um, with short sales, the bank pays 6% commission pretty much 99% of the time. Once in a while, you get chopped down. So we typically give 2% to a buyer's agent, and we keep four. So even on like a $200,000 deal, again, it's typically a zombie property. We send someone out there to just kind of clip the lockbox on, take some pictures, send them back to the office. We never really go there. We do all the listings via dot loop, so it's all signed. We never actually even meet the seller. And you know, you get typically 4%. A lot of times with these short sales, too, is they attract a lot of investors. I would say, really, so, so even like, like, look, we closed a $5 million deal last Friday, and that was due to someone who referred that deal to me that we did a short sale with. You actually did the closing on <laughs> years ago. And it was a referral from that guy. And it's like you get both ends of the spectrum with short sales. Yeah. So we certainly, we like helping people get out of the situation or whatnot. That's what the average price is. It's not a ton, but we are getting 4%. We're getting 4%. Yeah, minimum, minimum. Usually it's more like the six, though. I'd be also curious to know to just take that one step further. Me not know the the average short sale price, but what would you say is the average town the town that you're seeing the most? So that's shows? that's a good question. That's a good question because it's <clears> always <throat> been like up and down. Wilmington used to be like our top town. We used to do tons of deals in Wilmington, and there's less and less like around here. I mean, look, we've done them in Storm and North Reading and all around here in Linfield. Linfield used to be terrible. We used to do tons of deals in Linfield. Um, now, now we're doing a ton of Worcester, ton of Worcester. South Shore is just a disaster. It just never got cleaned up. South Shore is just chock full of short sales. Um, you know, the Athels of the world and uh, Haverhill's, Haverhill's of the world. Haverhill's a bad, no, just, Amesbury, that's what I was, I was trying to remember where you're from. Yeah. <laughs> We've done a lot in Amesbury. But yeah, those towns, you know. Okay. Right. But they're, they are still around here, like I said. They're, they're, yeah. yeah. Anyone else? Becca? Yeah. structure to your day? Do you time block for what you're doing? Do you have like these are the top five things you do first thing in the day or are you guys just kind of winging it whatever comes at you? Yeah, look, I actually want to start with you because you were the five o'clock wakey bakey. Yeah, I do map out my day. I don't have it. It's not consistent. Um, you know, I'm supposed to do my hour of power. My coach every day. To, hour of power means you're, you're on the phone, you're following up on leads, you're creating new business. Um, it's not as consistent as I would like to be. I'm not totally freestyling. Um, I do use a product called Calendly. 
Dot com, yep. which is amazing. So um, I do a lot of one to one networking, and so but I, I can schedule it so it's only specific hours in the week. So when I meet with someone, they just plug in there. And so, and same thing with appointments if it's a seller appointment or a buyer appointment, it's in this calendar. So I'm not because I'm great at messing it all up. So this helps me sort of control that. Is That's it, a good product. Do you like Calendly for the biggest feature that it allows you to block open time frames and let other people dictate when they want to fit into that? It's the best. Yeah. It's the best. Yeah. yeah. You just give people a, sh uh, a, a page link. and yep. they just pick from the, sh the times that you have available and then it, they put it into your calendar and you've got your appointment scheduled. Yeah. And so does that automatically download to your, your um, yes. iPhone? Yeah. You sync it how you want to sync it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anybody else on the panel want to answer? Time blocking? You a good time blocker? Huh? I have time blocks in my calendar. Whether or not I follow them is another. I'm not as disciplined as I'd like to be, but we can fix that. <laughs> <laughs> so the the only way I can go to sleep at night and stay asleep is if I do my to do list for the night before, mm. and I you know I'll do A, B, and C. Otherwise, I am up all night with everything that I'm going to forget. Are you a pad and paper to do list, or are you a uh phone to-do list okay what are you putting it in just notes that's okay <laughs> uh, yeah, it's okay I'm, I'm a pad and paper pad and pay. I'm a pad I and paper yeah. Yeah, I'm a notebook I like, to, I like to physically check it off sometimes I get so bad I get halfway through the pad I don't like the look of the pad I throw the pad and buy <laughs> yeah. a new oh, one don't, don't, do that. Yeah. don't do that yeah. 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 fill it up mark the dates <laughs> beginning and end yeah Al time blocking no, I, I don't manage the time. I mean, I, <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you, I do. So I do. I was telling Chris, actually, when I got here. So, like, you know, it gets pretty, you get a lot going on, and it can become overwhelming at times. So I do what I call brain dump, where, you know, I'll sit down for 15 minutes, and I'll put everything that I literally am thinking about on that patent paper, and I attack that list. And, and I find myself doing that probably more often than I like to now, but... You know, for the most part, you become a little weathered in the business. Yeah. I'll tell you, one of the things that I use to make sure I don't forget things is I use Siri, like, yeah. nonstop. Mm -hmm. yeah. If I, something comes to mind, I hit that button on the phone, Siri, remind me X, Y, Z at 5 o'clock tomorrow at whatever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it'll pop up. With, uh, guys, I think we're going to wrap it up in a second. And with, within the realm of being clean and using your term, using a brain dump, what do you do to kind of replenish and kind of just let it all out? Is there anything that you guys do that this allows you to kind of get... community TV? Right? Community <laughs> TV, right. <laughs> any, any, any strange hobbies? Any skydivers here? or <laughs> No? <laughs> Nothing? You know, I just mm. got a Peloton. No. Oh. What's a Peloton? A Peloton oh, the, bike? the bike, the bike. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Those look pretty cool. Yeah. And I have to tell you, I am, like I said, I'll, I'll buy anything. And usually. Juliet's doing really well. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and no, I tell you, I stretched this over a long time. It's a big investment, but I am shocked that I still, I love it. It's so. It, it's, it's speed cycling, right? Yeah. 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 But I mean, I, you know, I've, I've owned every apparatus and they're all coat hangers, <laughs> but I still use this. I got it in January and we still use it consistently. Yeah. So it's fun. I'm, su I'm surprised. That's it's worth good. the investment. Anyone and you else? get it done out of the way. That's perfect. Mm -hmm. Anyone? Anyone else? <coughs> all right. Oh, well, I just want to thank all of you again. This thank is, you. I, I've hosted three panels so far, and this is by far one of the best ones. You said that the last time, one. too. Yeah, yeah, I know. I'm sure it is. <laughs> <laughs> it's just because you're on it, Al. <laughs> uh, and it was a really great, informative. I think we're gonna, we'll find out off offline about how we can get everybody a copy of this. And uh, um, it was not live right now, but they're recording it as live. So I just want to thank you for taking the time for your insight. I love my team. <laughs> <laughs> Likewise, we all love our teams. And uh, thank you all very much. And thank you guys. And thank Reading Cable TV as well. Let's eat. Food's out there. So go on out, guys. <laughs>